Hey photo students, this is Miss V. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you guys about your double exposure project. So we're going to do this tutorial together. Um, this goes out to Asia since she needed a little help um, about how to like walk through overlapping two photos together um, to make this like modern uh, piece and um, this in the dark room what would happen is you could actually like expose a piece of photo paper with uh, more than one image multiple times and so we're taking that idea and actually doing it on the computer with um, Photoshop so the first thing we need to do, need to do is get our resource images so I'm going to go to the digital server and I'm going to go to photo and then I'm going to click and drag the double exposure tutorial uh, onto my desktop I already did it so you can see it's copying and after it saves I'm going to rename it so that um, no matter what period it is that no one's going to take my stuff so I'm going to do my first name and last name underscore double exposure Oop, and spell it right um, uh, and spell it correctly There you go. Okay, so um, I could right click and open each of these in Photoshop, but what I'm gonna do is in Photoshop, I'm gonna say file open, and then I'm gonna go to my desktop, and I'm gonna find that folder I just created, and I'm actually gonna click and drag over both of them to open them. So when we're doing a lot of things with more than one Im uh, image, this is the way that I recommend actually opening the files. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna crop this guy. So I'm gonna get the crop tool and I'm just gonna crop the left and right side right here. And then I'm gonna hit return or we can do the little check mark up there. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to image and adjustments and I'm gonna change the levels. Um, and notice that the shortcut for this is command L. All right, so what we want to do here is we want to move the lighter slider to the left which is going to make the photo brighter and I also want to add more contrast and that means that I'm creating more difference lighter and darkness so to do that I'm going to move this over to the left so usually I tell students to bring the sliders to the edge of the mountain um, and in this one um, we actually have some precise numbers we're going to type in um, I'm going to put seven um, and then 1.15 here, and then one, uh, 197. Um, so pretty close, actually. So just a little outside the bottom of the mountain is where we want to put um, our little sliders. And then I'm going to hit OK. Um, and you should have noticed that the brightness and contrast change on your guy. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the spot healing brush tool, which we already practiced using, and I'm just going to um, cover up his ear here to create less distraction in the image. And there it goes. I was interrupted. I'm really popular. People like to talk to me. All right, so part two. Um, now we're going to um, select this guy. So what is really easy about this image is that um, the background's all one solid color, so this should be really simple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the magic wand tool, which likes to pick uh, pixels that are similar in color and lighting and if I click just once notice how what a great job it did um, selecting the background the thing is is that I want to actually select this kid so what I need to do is inverse my selection so if I go up to select it's gonna let me do all these things with my selection um, and to um, uh, I want to switch my selection um, to and we call this inverse um, I want to select him, not the background. So I'm going to hit um, select inverse and notice that he is now selected. And what I want to do is I want to manipulate the edge um, of this guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to select and mask and it's going to bring me up all these options in terms of um, refining the edge of um, my my figure here and I'm actually going to create a mask as well. Um, so here I can actually, let me just show you, you can view this on um, different modes. So um, onion skin lets you see more than one layer. Um, you can see the marching ants, you can see it overlay, you can see it on black and white. I'm going to leave it on black um, just because it's so much easier to see like the edges of him 
and how can I refine um, that edge? So I'm going to increase the radius here. Um, I think the tutorial says like 1.5. Yeah, 1.5. So let's put that in. 1.5. And then we could also um, change some other things about the edge. So I can smooth it out. I can feather it. Um, that's going to make it more wispy. I can change the contrast um, of this. And I'm going to go down to where it says output settings and where it says output two. I'm actually going to say that I want to create a new layer with a layer mask. And we'll see what that looks like um, after we get out of here. But before I leave, uh, notice that it's still not looking so hot. So I'm going to actually take what's called the Refine Edge Brush Tool. And I'm going to click and drag around the edges of his hair. And do you see how it's grabbing the white and it's trying to find what is hair and actually what is um, the, the white background that's still left. So I'm just going to go around his eyelashes and anywhere in his hair and I'm going to fix up the edges. So this is going to take me a while. I'm going to rush through this. I know you guys are going to like take your time and make it perfect to get that four, right? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to, and you can go around his, yeah, you can go around a lot more places, but um, I'm going to hit okay. And then let's look at our layers. So notice that it made a, a duplicate of him. It created a new layer and it created a layer mask. Um, so that means that he's showing and the background isn't. So now what I need to do is I'm going to create a new layer underneath him. Um, so I'm going to create uh, right next to the trash can. We're going to make a new layer and I'm going to move it underneath him. And I want to fill in the background with a gray color. So I'm going to find my paint bucket. If you can't see it, it might be hidden under your gradient tool. And I want to change the color before I fill in this layer. So I'm going to double click over here in my color. And I actually have a, a specific code of gray. It's D, C, D, B, D, 9. Um, you can put it here in the hex number code and say OK. And then I want to make sure that my layer 1 is selected. And I'm going to click, and it's going to fill it in with gray. At this time, I'm going to call it background because we should get into the habit of actually naming um, our things. So um, I'm going to pause this again because I'm being interrupted, um, but we'll go on to the next video. Okay, guys, now we are ready to bring in our second image. So we're going to bring in the second image of um, this forest. So the first thing I need to do is select all of it. So I'm going to hit Command A to select all. And then I'm going to hit Command C to copy it. I'm going to go back to uh, my original Photoshop image. And then I'm going to place um, the forest above the portrait. So Command V, paste. Now it's going to ask me, do I want to convert these colors to RGB? That's what I'm working in right now. I'm going to say OK. And then it's way too big. Um, so something new to you guys is something called transform. So transform is something that you could use to change the scale of something, rotate it, flip it, all kinds of different things you can do with transform. So the shortcut for using transform is command T. And now you can see that the bounding box is extending um, outside of our artboard here. So this is how big the actual original image is compared to the guy. So I'm going to click, I'm going to hold down the shift button. That's going to constrain the port proportion. So if I don't hold shift, I'm just going to show you, it's going to let me squish it. And I don't want to squish it. I'm going to hit command Z so I don't accidentally squish it. I'm going to hold down the shift button and I'm also going to pull in from the corner. And when I do that, it constrains the picture and notice that it's not squishing or, or you know, actually squashing it um, from the top. Um, so I'm going to bring it to the same size. And then the other thing that I want to do um, is I actually want to rotate it while I have it open. So I'm going to, I actually want to have um, the top of the trees coming from the top of his head. So I'm actually going to continue holding shift and I'm going to rotate it uh, 180 degrees. And I might end up moving this a little bit more and making it a little bit bigger, but I'm going to hit um, the enter return key right now to keep that um, locked because uh, now that I'm done positioning it. Okay. So now I'm going to hold down, I'm going to, I have the forest um, selected. I'm going to hold down the command key and then I'm going to select um, the mass below it. And what that does is it now selects the black area of the mask. And um, I actually want to make this a clipping mask now 
on my forest layer. So I'm going to go down here to, um, I call it the Japanese flag, but it's to add a layer mask. Um, so I'm going to select that. And just so you know, uh, right now the mask is now uh, linked with this forest and I need to actually unlock that. So I'm going to actually hit the little lock the chain between it and unlock it um, and I'm going to select just the forest and I want to manipulate again the forest um, without actually moving the mask. So I'm going to hit command T again and I'm going to hold shift and pull from the corner and I'm going to move this around until I got what I where I want it to be. Uh, that's pretty good to me. I like that. And then I'm going to hit um, return again so I can actually lock that into place. So the next thing I want to do is um, I'm going to make a, a, a copy of the portrait uh, right here. And I'm going to make a copy. So remember that Command J duplicates the layer. So Command J, and I've duplicated this guy. Um, and what I want to do is I'm going to start manipulating um, some uh, features of him in color. So I'm going to actually drag this above the forest. And then I'm going to go to Image adjustments and I first want to desaturate bring out all the color of this image so I'm going to hit image adjustments um, and desaturate and now that's made him black and white the next thing I want to do is I want to apply some levels again um, remember that the shortcut for to getting to levels is command L and I'm going to take this black slider and I want to move it to the right um, or I can simply just type in 117, which is how dark I want this image. And then I'm going to hit OK. Um, and now I want to bring a little bit of a blue tint to him. So again, I'm going to go back to my image adjustments and I'm going to go to what's called hue and saturation. So hue is the color and saturation um, is how much color is actually sinking into the image. So um, I actually wrote you guys down some um, numbers to use, but before we do this, I have to make sure that I'm selecting colorize so that I'm actually adding color to the image. So I'm going to type in 212 here, which is going to key in some blue tones, and then I also want to increase the saturation. I want to up that level of blue, and I'm going to change that to, I'm actually going to lower it, I'm sorry, to 10, decreasing the vi vividness of the photo, and then I'm going to hit OK. All right, so this is looking pretty good. I'm going to right click on um, the, I actually already duplicated um, the mask. I was gonna tell you to create another mask, but I did that when I hit Command J. Um, so now what I want to do is actually um, go here and add a blending mode to uh, the layer. And I wrote down that I'd like you to add screen. Okay, and now we see that effect coming in. This is where we can see that desired double exposure effect. Um, but I still want to um, just um, kind of get in there and manipulate the image and make you know what I want to show through. Um, we have these two merged together, but maybe I want some of the image of the forest to shine through more than um, the actual portrait. So I'm actually going to take the brush tool and um, I want to make sure that the, the um, um, I said that you guys can pick the airbrush soft round tool um, and at a size 17 but you just want to make sure that the hardness is on 0% um, and then any of these ones that have like a soft, soft edge um, and then I just said size 17 um, and then I said you should go to the layer mask of the forest so I want to make sure that the forest is actually selected and um, I have the black selected and uh, let me zoom in at this point and I'm going to make my brush bigger what I want to do is I want to get rid of the forest at the very top and I'm going to paint this out and then I'm also going to go to let's see, a little bit I'm going to go to the layer mask right here of the portrait and I'm also going to use the black and remember when I'm painting with black that means that I'm getting rid of I'm hiding that portion of the image 
I might come back here and get rid of a little bit more. I want it to look more natural. And I went, yeah, I want to go back to this one again and get rid of some of this hair. Very good. And then I'm going to go back, to, I'm actually going to go to the above portrait and um, I'm actually going to get rid of the hairline up here too. So it looks like it's like fading into, his hairline's fading into the background. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer beneath the um, desaturated portrait. So I'm going to pick the forest layer and hit new. Um, and here I want to um, color in but below his eyes to really bring out his eyes. So I'm going to take the paintbrush, I'm going to double click on the color. And um, this one I want to change to 2F2C35. And I'm going to select OK. And remember that I can actually um, uh, hold down com command and click on the mask to make sure that I'm only painting in this area. And then I'm going to make the brush way smaller and I'm going to paint blue behind his eyes. You see how that's bringing out those aspects in his eyes. And notice that I'm not painting over here because only um, this is selected. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this up um, and um, I'm going to select um, the desaturated portrait up here um, and I've already added the layer mask. I'm going to take the brush tool and change it to black now and I'm going to um, brush over some areas in his neck that I don't want to be shown, showing. So I'm going to go over here and I don't want these details of his neck showing. I actually want the forest showing through. And you could do that in more areas, but I think I went too far. So I'm going to hit Command Z and I just want his neck. I want a little bit of his collar showing through. And then Command D to unselect. And I'm really liking how this looks. I might go back and actually um, delete a little bit more of the hairline up here. That's personal preference at this point. You know, how, where do you want the image to end and stop? And I'm going to go back to this as well and get just a little bit more out of here. I just wanted to change how that blends. I really like this. All right, so that's it. You got a double exposure uh, tutorial.